Hello everybody. Hey, it's uh, David here again. Hey, uh, today I just wanted to uh, share with you some um, household chemical safety and handling with you guys. These are things that I used to teach all the time you know, when I was still teaching. So I thought it'd be a good topic for everybody to kind of be aware of some of the hazards associated with our household chemicals. Because a lot of times, you know, we don't think that the things in our own home can actually hurt us. I know we talk a lot about worker safety and on-the-job uh, safety, but there's also a lot of things we need to be um, considered of here at our house. So, all right, let's get started here. So, a little bit of a definition on hazard materials. Hazard materials is any material that poses a risk or a threat to the health and safety of people or the damaged property. So here's some basic safety rules. All right. So the, what we want to know is we want to know the hazards that we're going to be working with. How do we get to know these? We want to read the labels. We, uh, they will tell us our safety precautions. We want to know what PPE to use, the safety gear, um, how to clean up the chemical. <clears throat> always, we want to always make sure that we follow the instructions on the proper use of the chemicals. You know, uh, one thing that we think a lot of times of is more and better. Uh, more is always better. So if it takes a little bit to clean something, let's give it a whole lot more. But in the world of the chemistry, that's really not the case. So let's be aware of that. You want to make sure that you have great ventilation. If you're using stuff things as oven cleaners and bleaches and ammonias, let's make sure we open the windows, run the fans. We want to make sure that we get plenty of air exchange there. All right. Uh, a little note down here is air conditioning is not adequate. Air conditioning basically just recycles the air that's in your con your closed space or your confined space. So having a way to bring in fresh air is really what you want to do. We want to make sure that we avoid breathing those vapors. Use good in hygiene and housekeeping. Let's separate our work area versus our living areas, our eating areas and drinking. What we don't want to basically do is eat and drink when we're using chemicals. We don't want to store them in uh, chemicals in food containers. We need to store chemicals in the, in the containers that they originally came in. And if you're making a solution of a chemical, which is fine to do, then you need to put that in a separate container, bottle, container, but you need to make sure that it's well labeled exactly what it is. So let's say you're going to make a 10% bleach solution. Well, the right thing to do is, is to dilute your bleach, but label your bottle 10% bleach solution, Put your initials, when you made it, all those good things. That way, nobody in your house has to wonder, Mom, what is this? I don't know what this is. I thought it was, you know, hair detangler, and I sprayed it on my face, and now I'm, my eyes are burning. So we want to make sure that we don't do that. So when you're using a lot of chemicals, whether it's liquid or solids or, or dust chemicals, whatever it is, we want to make sure that we wash our clothes, wash our face, you know, uh, <clears throat> all those good hygiene things related to that. Children's art, you know, which is a very popular thing, especially on YouTube. So we got to make sure that you're, and there's a lot of great products out there now that are very child friendly. So I absolutely encourage you to go and use those items. Those items are going to be very important, right? But let's not leave our children unattended with chemicals, no matter what age they are. And if you are going to do a bunch of work around the house and you got your kids helping you, explain to them the proper way how to use the chemical. Have them read the label. You guys can use this as a teaching moment with your, your children, right? So we got to be really careful when it comes to mixing chemicals together. One big general rule of thumb is don't do that. Don't mix chemicals unless it's specially designed to be mixed with another one. 
An example is this. If you mix ammonia and bleach together, you can get a very poisonous gas that will kill you. you know, in no time, you know, the, the gas will knock you down, will take away your breath, will stop, stop your heart, and you will die. So make sure you understand what can and cannot be mixed. And if you don't understand it, don't mix it. We want to store flammables and oxidizers and poison products separately from each other. It's important to, to kind of, I'm a, I'm a big fan of green products. So if we keep green products in the house, that reduces the risk of our chemicals reacting badly with other chemicals. Because oxidizers and flammables and acids, they don't go together. They, they're not supposed to be stored together. Now, never store flammables with oxidizers. That's because it can cause an explosion. So what to do if you do spill a hazardous substance in your house? Well, we want to make sure that you wash the area with water. You know, flush dilution is the solution was the same way back in the old chemistry days. But in, in the modern world, let's use soap and water and we clean, I'm sorry, do not use the soap. Use plenty of water, change your clothes. For your eyes, make sure you rinse them repeatedly, you know, and then repeatedly and again and again and again. Uh, you can't rinse your eyes too much, right? Then if you're still having troubles, make sure that you seek medical attention. Now, the reason you don't want to use soaps is because the soap is a chemical, so you're putting a chemical onto another chemical. You can have an adverse reaction, especially at burns. <clears throat> All right, if you spill a chemical on the ground, so let's contain and cover the spill with an absorbent material, something like kitty litter or clay garage sweep material. We want to sweep it up and, uh, and put it in a plastic bag, and we can take it to a hazardous waste collection center for that. Now, if you know you're going to be working outside with chemicals, I just ask that you be very, very cautious. Because, you know, a little bit of a chemical, just a few drops of a chemical can really pollute a lot of the environment. Motor oil. This is one of those that um, environmentally can be devastating. So, but let's look at the health concerns first. Any oil that is refined from crude oil is be, uh, can be used. Any oil that is no longer useful, so we got a extended storage, we got the spillage, we got the contamination and uh, non hazardous impurities. So all of these things can be a health hazard to us. So used oil is considered and regulated in hazardous ways. Now there are a lot of places like. Walmart will, will they, Walmart will let you drop off the used motor oil at them. Okay. So the hazardous comes from all the additives plus the oil, the petroleum in itself. Used motor oil has a lot of metal, heavy metals in it, whether it's magnesium or aluminum or steel, but it has heavy metals. So that comes from the engines. So our, our concerns are if you dump oil into the ground or into the, into the environment, it can easily pollute our lakes and our rivers and our groundwater. It can pollute the groundwater with contaminants like lead, magnesium, copper, and zinc. You see all of these things. So here's something that I find really fascinating is one quart of motor oil, one quart, guys, can pollute 250,000 gallons of drinking water. 250,000 gallons of drinking water can be polluted by one quart of oil. So bad to where it's no longer drinkable or usable. So let's not uh, dump used oils. Let's be careful about that. We need to um, not use it to kill any plants uh, or aquatic life because it will. I know back in the old days, I used to hear farmers saying, oh, yeah, well, I just take the used motor oil and I spray it along the fence line to kill all the weeds. 
Yeah, but they were they were polluting the groundwater as the oil would settle and seep into that. So let's recycle it and your oil filters. Well, let's not dump it on the ground. Let's be aware that if we're out in our driveways and we get some on the spill that we need to try to clean it up and throw it. It's better to throw away a solid, um, dispose of a solid than it is to try to uh, wash down a liquid oil. Pesticides and herbicides. Now, we all have these in our houses. Uh, <clears throat> so pesticides are chemicals designed to kill pests, insects, rodents, and things of that nature. Herbicides um, kill plants and other microorganisms like funguses and things of that matter. So they both have health concerns related to them. You can breathe them in, you can ingest them, you can absorb them through your skin, uh, and these can have negative effects on your nervous system. Just think about it this way. If a chemical can kill a plant or kill a mouse, what do you think it's gonna to do to you? Now you may be much larger, and so it may take a lot more dose, a larger dose, but you're still gonna have some very serious adverse effects if you expose yourself to, to these type of chemicals. There are a lot of environmental concerns. Just because they're designed to kill the pest outside or to kill the vegetation outside, we still gotta use them in the proper way, all right? Automobiles. Now, this, this is a really important one, <clears throat> especially at times when we have hurricanes and tornadoes and natural disasters, your cars get submerged in water and they really become an environmental hazard. So now our automobiles in general, they have lots and lots of hazardous chemicals in them. They have gasoline, motor oil, antifreeze, car batteries, degreasing agents, car waxes, cleaners, windshield wiper fluids. So uh, they are necessary for the operation of the vehicles, but these are very hazardous chemicals and they need to be treated with respect as such. Batteries, you know, there's a lot of places that will take home batteries like Walmart and uh, USA Battery and there's a few other battery exchange will take these from you. A lot of the batteries that uses lead acid, so um, severic acid or, or in those. So, but the lead itself can contaminate the ground, the water. Um, you can poison yourself by lead, of course. So there's an interesting point. Each automotive battery contains approximately 18 pounds of toxic metals and a gallon of corrosive acid. So we all know how heavy batteries are. So that's amazing how much uh, of it is hazardous waste or hazardous materials. Environmental concerns, yes. They can go into the ground and the water. Leaking batteries are horrible. You don't want to dispose of them in the trash. You don't want to put them in the landfills. And of course, batteries are definitely fire hazards. They're basically just a portable energy uh, source with hazardous chemicals in it. Antifreeze is another one that's really dangerous. I know that there is on the market now some antifreezes that are more green or more environmental friendly, but you know, we gotta be aware of that. Ethylene glycol, which is a toxic chemical. So it's clear and colorless and sweet tasting liquid. So animals and pets and children really like it. The, um, it almost smells good, almost. And so there's been numerous children that were poisoned because they found it out in the garage and they didn't know what it was, but hey, it looked pretty because it was pretty green and smelled good, so they drank it. Pets like it because it tastes good. So here's some of the issues 
leading up to death because it, if you drink enough of it, it will kill you. So it brings on depression, respiratory and cardiac failure, renal, um, and brain damage, and is often fatal. Big environmental concerns. So we don't want to make sure that we are disposing of it carefully and correctly. We got to make sure that we don't pour it in, into the environment. Gasoline is extremely flammable, as you guys probably are aware of. So we want to make sure that we store gasoline in a cool, well-vented area away from electrical sources. I don't know how many houses over the years, when I was doing a bunch of environmental assessments in homes, that I would see a gas can right next to the hot water heater. So we got to make sure that we keep it in a well-ventilated, a cool place, preferably outside of the living environment, like in a, a shed or an outside storage. And of course, gasoline can only be stored in approved containers. So a milk jug or a bucket or anything like that, that's not what is designed for, okay? Household cleansers, clean, uh, cleaners. So there's a lot of these that can be very hazardous to your health, even in small amounts. I know it would take a lot of, a lot of uh, most chemicals that are in our houses to really hurt us, besides giving us skin burns and making our respiratory system mess up. That's what most chemicals do that, that we have in our house. But depending on the chemical and depending on your route of exposure, you know, the breathing, the absorption, whatever it may be, if you eat it accidentally, ingest it, it plays a major role in how that chemical is going to adversely affect you, all right? So they, a lot of these affect the central nervous system, the liver and the kidneys. Many are flammable. Uh, carcinogens, cancer-causing agents, there's a lot of that. So we need to really read those bottles and know what they are. The other big key with household cleaners is to make sure that we don't store those in a way that the small children can find them. I know it's normal for us to keep our chemicals underneath the kitchen sink. I do that. But I don't have any small children um, or any children here at the house at all. So uh, I would encourage you, if you have that, don't do that. Do not do that. A lot of them are strong acids and bases. Acids are found in tub and towel cleaners. Uh, the bases are like in the oven cleaners. Phenols are poisonous and flammable chemicals that represent active ingredients in most disinfectant products. So there's really a lot, a lot of these chemicals are really harmful. The good news is, like I was saying earlier, there's a lot of green products, a lot of natural products that we should be trying to, to use more instead of harmful chemicals. Paint, you know, we all like to paint our houses and keep them pretty, but um, there, it's, it's a hazard, it's a chemical hazard too. It's a hazardous waste. So a couple things to keep in mind about paint. Where we live, you're absolutely not allowed to throw liquid paint into the garbage. You can throw paint cake into the regular trash. Paint cake is where maybe you took some leftover paint and you set it out in the sun and you let it dry to become a hard cake-like substance. What the sun does is allows for all the off-gassing of the volatile chemicals and renders the inert ingredients the, just to be left behind. So in our, our area of the world, you just cannot throw paints in the garbage. We do have a lot of collection centers that will take liquid paint off your hands at no charge, of course. Now you gotta remember your oil-based paints are flammable. There are a lot of odor-free paints now that are better for your interior use. A lot of paint uh, technology have gotten much better over the years. PPE, a little bit on PPE, which stands for personal protective equipment. So you can basically just use long, long rubber gloves. You can wear goggles and a respirator, what they call maybe an adjust mask. 
But the, the key, if you're going to wear any mask to clean your house with, is to make sure the difference is this. A dust mask has one band on it. A respirator has two bands on it. It's the easiest way to, to see. So if you go to Lowe's or any of your places or offline on the internet, you really want to get a respirator for cleaning around chemicals. A dust mask is going to do it. A dust mask is designed to keep dust out of your breathing zone. It's not going to do anything for chemicals. So uh, what they call an N95 respirator is where you need to go. I'll talk more on respirators in another video. But keep that in mind. A dust mask isn't going to work for you. you got to use a respirator. Here's some examples of PPE that you can use. Um, gloves, coveralls, you know, face shields. You can go any, anywhere from real simple clothing like jeans and, and a long sleeve shirt all the way to a full body suit uh, to protect you. A couple little points. Some chemicals are, are so aggressive that there's, there's very few gloves that would protect you. So you got to keep that in mind. A lot of these chemicals will melt regular old latex or plastic gloves. So if you're going to be working with some really serious chemicals, you need to do the research on the bottle and you can go to the company's website, which will help tell you what PPE to use best for that. All right. So in general, there is no such thing as impermeable chemical protective clothing, meaning that very, there's very few, few things out there that's going to protect you absolutely. But if you combine it with a bunch of other things, you combine PPE with good hygiene, with good ventilation, and choosing the right chemicals, you're going to be just fine and have no worries. All right, guys. Well, that's it for me for today. And we will talk to you soon. And thank you for watching. And I hope this was helpful and educational. And I wish you well.